just like the um, just like the Sumerians, we had taken the Creator and we had pushed him into the backfield, and we had made him a lesser god, and all the lesser gods, which was um, elemental gods, meaning. Um, different families had associated with different gods so as these different families had exchanged powers um, these other gods had been exalted over the others as time went other gods had been exalted and the true god the creator had been set aside and set in the backfield and uh, and you'll see that you'll see that in the book you see so much of it, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you right now. You're gonna see uh, they're gonna talk about the Trinity, not very much, but if you read it, the in the Trinity, they're not talking about Christianity Trinity, like Holy Ghost and stuff. What they're talking about is um, lower, higher, like your different set, the different. Um, your different selves that you tap into, your different beings, and um, your high being, your lower being. You know how they say, "Oh man, you thinking with your low low brain, think with your high brain, uh, think with your brain." You know that's that's kind of a sense of how they used it. But I understand that when the when the other tribes came and perverted the system with with their Greek beliefs, with many god worship. That obviously the historic events have been tainted, and only now do this priestly line because this guy who we're going to go into Moke Kupi uh, Hell, he uh, comes from a priest line, and his name isn't Moke. His name uh, is actually different when he started uh, researching into his genealogy. Uh, he found out he was uh, of a priestly order. And as he had gotten acquainted and with his birthright, uh, he said, you don't match a name. One of the priests, the high priest. And they said, I'm going to call you Moki. And what? And... Well, he didn't really understand it and he was like perplexed and like not really moved but what Moki means is Moses so it was like a great honor because he seen the work this man was doing and he said he said that no you're more befitting of Moses bringing Hawaiians through an exodus out from many God worship and back to a more pure form of the the religion it really wasn't religion it was just an agriculture system of, and one guy worship so to to add to that was when we as hawaiians local people we've been taught differently we've been taught upside down so if you were to hear mok in um, in a Portuguese, uh, an immigrant. See, immigrants came and they changed definitions to our definition. They changed the definitions of our words. So when we think of mo, what we think of is like a, a ugly person who doesn't care about themselves, who holds them, who doesn't hold themselves high, and is ugly, dirty and cannot talk, speaks very bad, or is um, more of a native who has bad English and is not very smart. So when we see Mok, we think like an idiot. So to really understand the, the language that it comes from and to know that 
Mok is actually a reference to Moses, then it, it it makes so much sense to me because of the the knowledge I've already gained about how they pervert our languages and our meanings and how they covet and how they turn things upside down. So it makes sense. It's just it's just crazy. So we're gonna get into this book. I didn't really want to get into the book because because of our whole concept, but but we got just like how we get into the Sumerian texts. I wanna I wanna get into this and see what it has what it what it talks about, and it's just gonna be like the creation story, um, following Genesis through ancient cultures. This is just following Genesis through ancient cultures. But see, it has it has some interesting things in it, so we're gonna get we're gonna get into it. And I, I was gonna just pick it apart, but I think I'm gonna start from the beginning, from uh, the prologue. So right now, I think we're getting to the part two, or oh, part three. Good lord. Okay, part three. Almost. Fair use statement. So, so let's just click on it here. Contents prologue. All right. So I'm gonna read it from the screen. I have my book. Huh, it's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna read it from my book. I'm gonna try and move the screen along. Okay, I'm sorry if I don't, uh, if I'm not on it. But bear with me. All right, let's see what we got. Can you see? All right. Na makahiki. 1950. I was born and raised not far from Paliuli, once an ever verdant upland of the gods in the days of the old, which had deteriorated by my time <coughs> into a precipitous house of refuge that provided asylum to ancestral remains. It is a house, however, to which I became bound by the inherent traditions of my forefather in my youth. The house is, of, is one of light and one of darkness, the light of one's immediate ancestors and the darkness of one's remote ancestors. In the house is a spirit world, a spirit world that I've come to call Ao Aomakuwa. The world in which hereditary spirits seek to look out and cling to the descendants' world of living light. I go there from time. Ao is what we call time. I go there from time to time to enter into a parental. In Hawaiian, makua is how they would pronounce parental. And world is what they would say honua. So, to enter into makua, hanua of ancestral beings, meaning to enter into a parental world of ancestral beings. Upon climbing onto its eroded plateau, I walk first through the remnants of an ancient garden of life and death, where as a child, I came to know of the light of Akua. So see, see, here he goes. Oh, sorry. So it goes uh, as a child. Okay, right now. So he goes as a child. Where as a child, I came to know of the light of Akua, God. So, in, in now, see, you, you've heard, like, in the Bible, you hear Lord, Lords, <coughs> God, Gods, 
Elohim, Eloh, Elohim, Elohims. So <clears throat> right here, now it's saying, now it's saying the Creator, the Most High. Where as I, as a child, I came to know the light of higher, higher, in its immortal origin. So now he's saying the Creator of, of Akua, God. In its immortal origin and the darkness of higher higher in its mortal creation in this garden I have always experienced a visible harmony of spiritual members a totality of inner thoughts and visions in which no part deviates from the ancestral path that I was born to walk upon with consummate joy, I walk about this most ancient of ancestral gardens, gazing at its will to survive in a state of deep inspiration. I then walk along the precipitous rim of cliffs that drop down from a garden in the east called Poki'i, literally the netherworld, that shelters the remains of my ancestors below. Upon reaching its northern extremity, I perch on a large uh, jutting rock called Lenakau Hamne, literally the leaping place of spirits. Above sheer walls of crooked, cracked, and jagged layers of lava rock that once rolled beneath the earth in the heat of 